I know many of you are probably surprised that Big Sills has made it to this Thanksgiving Friday. <laughs> Me too. After yesterday, hope everybody had a spectacular Thanksgiving. All the football that was played on Thursday too. Just sitting around. And all, of, all I want everyone to know is Big Sills got fatter. Okay? We got fatter yesterday. So welcome aboard on this Football Friday. Thanks for coming aboard. And all right. Here we go. Day after Turkey Day games. If you were to tell me that the Philadelphia Eagles would be in the eighth spot in the NFC playoff race, I would have said you were crazy four weeks into the season. The Eagles today, on November 26th, are in the eighth seed. And you have a Dallas Cowboy team that is floundering. Can you win the NFC East? This is absolutely incredible that the Eagles have played themselves into this position. It's incredible. It's incredible. We're going to throw that topic out. Also, I have another topic for you, too, as well. So much to hit on. But I, I want to tell you the guest today, too. So at the bottom of this hour, the golden voice and legendary Hall of Fame voice of the Philadelphia Eagles, Merrill Reese, will join us at the bottom of the hour. Then at the top of the 5 o'clock hour Eastern time, afternoon host, the number one rated show in New York City, my good friend Craig Carton will give us his thoughts on the nuclear meltdown New York Giants, who the Eagles will face this coming Sunday. So we have Merrill Reese at the bottom of the hour, the voice of the Eagles, and the afternoon host on WFAN, Craig Carton. That'll be at the top of the 5 o'clock hour. I'm going to get to all your thoughts. By the way, if you're new to the program, we always start this out by doing this, okay? We welcome everybody aboard. Eastside Monster, Nick, Muhammad, thank you so much. You guys have been spectacular. Thank you so much. And those of you that are new coming into the show, any questions that you guys have, okay, we add it to the content. We got a boatload of stuff to hit on. We have a ton of guests to get to today. We add you to the show, and we kind of ping pong it back and forth. I always started off also by saying this. Please, guys, bang on that like button. Okay, here we go. Can this team, the Philadelphia Eagles, can this football team win the NFC East? Do you know who Dallas ends their season with? They got the Cardinals and then the Eagles at the tail end of the season. What's wrong with the Dallas Cowboys? It's their inability to be able to run the ball. They can't run the ball anymore. Zeke Elliott looks like he has completely resorted back to being 2020 Zeke, where I thought he was out of gas then. He's now out of gas again. They got guys in the offensive line that are just banged up. It's funny. Watch this. Philadelphia Eagles now have the best offensive line in the NFC East. That's a pretty big statement. Especially when you have Dallas and all the money that Jerry and Stephen Jones have paid to those five guys in Dallas. Folks, you have the best offensive line once again for the first time since 2017. You have it again. The best O-line. What happens when you have the best O-line? That means you can run people off the field. You can run them off the field. Then you have the Jets on the flip side of this. Giant game on Sunday. Can you win the East? I can't believe what I'm about to say. Did I not tell you going into that Thursday game? Did I not tell you guys? I thought Dallas would struggle against that Raiders team. And they did. They can't stop the run. Now, they're going to get Randy Gregory back and a couple guys as they get ready for a healthy Saints team Next week. By the way, guys, the Saints will be healthy next Thursday when the Cowboys play. Guys, I got to tell you, man, I think you guys can win the East. 
But here's the big thing. The the Eagles are notorious for dropping a game they shouldn't. Don't lose that Jets game. Don't lose that Jets game. Don't lose the Jets game, guys. And I think you can win this thing. How about this? Strive for the East, land in the playoffs. You're sitting in the eighth seed as of right now. It's incredible. What a story. I think if you keep running the ball and you stick to your identity, I think this football team has now become one of the more dominant teams at the point of attack, which means this. You're playing with a fist. The Cowboys, well, they're kind of they're kind of wobbling right now. They're wobbling. And their head coach I don't believe in Mike McCarthy. When it comes down to nut crunching time, I don't believe in that guy. And I'll say it to you. Aaron Rodgers was right about him. He's overrated. That guy's overrated. If you keep playing the way you're playing, limit to turnovers. Don't climb out of what you're doing. Stick to it. You're going to win this thing. You're going to win this thing. My God, when it's in your grasp, and then get this, that game at Lincoln Financial at the end of the year, guys, we may have to get Krause Sr. to bring Big Sills out to Philly. If that game is for the NFC East, We may have to do a few shows out there, okay? We may have to do a few shows, and we'll find a place to do it. And Big Sills Army and everyone will get an opportunity to jump on the show, and we'll all get together. Let's pull this thing together here. Let's pull this thing together. Keep playing hard. Stay stay within that identity that you've built. Damn, I love it. Toughness. Running people over. Picking guys up. Don't hit my quarterback like that. Let me throw another topic off of you, too, before we start getting to the folks that are here with your takes. Guys, I'll ask you a very simple question on drafting. By the way, this Michael Parsons kid that plays with the Dallas Cowboys is spectacular. Do you think Howie regrets drafting Devontae Smith and not taking Parsons? And personally, I think Smith is spectacular too. Okay? You think he regrets it a little bit though? See, the Eagles need an edge rusher right now more than they need a wide out. Is that fair? Is that fair? I mean, Parsons is not only in line, folks, for the rookie of the year defensive player, but he's also in line for potentially the defensive player of the year award as a rookie. You think he regrets it a little. And let me ask you, guys, as we say, can this team can win the East? The first topic we threw at you. What's been the difference from the first four games? This is the first question I'm going to ask Merrill Reese at the bottom of the hour as well. What do you think the biggest difference is from the first four games to the last four games for the Eagles? What's been the biggest difference? It's got to be attitude. It's got to be their approach, the way they do, the way they do things. It's got to be their approach. There's just more conviction. It's almost like they simplified everything. Okay? All right, let's get over to everyone. And by the way, you guys have been spectacular for the last few weeks. I can't thank you enough. 
Philly Sheezy says, pay, playing, playing, I'm assuming, to the strength. Frederick, not at all. Him and Jeffrey want high-powered offenses. Yeah, but Frederick, man, that kid Parsons can play. Nick says the difference in this four-game stretch versus the beginning of the year four-game stretch, we run the ball way better. Smile says giving the ball to the RBs. East Camden for life, how he drafted Smith because he screwed up on Rieger. Okay. Okay. Yeah, man, but you never want to do something like that. Uh, since I screwed up on one wideout, let me go after another guy. I told you that's not my mentality and how I build a football team. My mentality is from the inside out. I think that's how you build a team. Goss says this, having better defense and offense have completely changed them. Yeah, but, but Goss, what has been that change? It's got to be philosophy. Eastside Monster, we need to ship you to every game. <laughs> Put him in the locker room and give him a pregame speech. Ken, I love that. Attitude changer. Yeah, but Ken, you know what the attitude changer is for this Eagle team from the first four to the last four games? It's clearly been attitude for sure. And attitude is created when you run the ball. Nick says you should, you should get the GM, Dan. Hey, we'll work on it. Hey, Frederick. Parsons is a special player, isn't he? I'm not going to put him in the Lawrence Taylor category, but he's a special player. And you know what's great about him, too? I don't know if he's better with his hand in the dirt or standing up because he can cover tight ends. I mean, he is a special player. Philly, she's aggressiveness. And, but you know what, Philly? That comes with, that comes with the ability to run the rock. Omar says, O-line healthy. How about this? O Omar, you're onto something. What's been the big issue right now for Dallas? Dallas is offensive line. It's musical chairs right now. Right, Omar? Everyone keeps going, what's wrong with Dallas? It's in their offensive line. Isn't it funny? It's in the inside of the offense. Well, what's wrong with Dak? Nothing's wrong with Dak. The inability to move the chains and you're constantly in third and long. By the way. That Raider Cowboy game was helped out by the officials, but I thought it was pretty fair. And what I mean by that is the officials in that game were shitty to both teams. Over 14 penalties apiece, 100 yards a team in penalties. That was an atrocious football game and called by the NFL officials. Let those guys play, man. Let those guys play. By the way, almost 40 million people watched that football game between Raiders and the Cowboys, 40 million people watch that thing. And so it's on display. Cowboys issue. Hey, you know what we're starting to find out about a couple teams? Dallas can't stop the run. You know who else can't stop the run? Oh, my God. Eagle fans, is this playing into 17 again? Who are the two teams that can't stop the run? Rams? Cowboys. Rams and Cowboys, all that flash, and they can't stop the run. I don't care if you have Jerry Rice or Randy Moss catching footballs. If you can't stop the run, those dudes are on the sidelines. They're on the sidelines. Would you rather have Parsons or Devontae Smith? Whew. Guys, I won't lie, man. I'm a defensive guy, so it's not fair to ask me. I think wide receivers are a dime a dozen. I take the kid in Dallas. Okay? I'm taking the kid in Dallas. And by the way, I think the kid is great, Devontae. No shade. This is not a shade conversation. I'm just wondering, with, with the need of the football team, what do you think was a bigger need now when you look at Parsons and you look at Smith? That's all I'm saying. Omar says, Smith, okay. Hey, look, 
This kid, and, and watch this. Will these two guys be pro bowlers one day? Parsons is probably going to be a pro bowler this year. And if there's some opt-outs of the pro bowl, if Devonta has over 1,000 yards this year, he may end up getting He's clearly going to be on the all-rookie team. Nick says, I'm taking my kid. I, I, I'm with you, too. South Philly says, funny because Eagles couldn't stop the run earlier. Now they're tough. I think they just change everything up, man. I think the coaching staff completely, first four games to where we see this team right now, to these last four games, guys, it, it, it's a completely different football team. Completely different team. Look at Dallas's issues right now. The Cowboys' issues are in the O-line. It's not Zeke's the same guy he was a year ago. By the way, can I tell you why I think Ezekiel Elliott has fallen off the planet? I don't believe that he's in the same shape that he was in when he came out of Ohio State. Because he came out of the gate like game, gust, game busters. And all of a sudden now, it just doesn't look like, it looks like he's tired and old. They need to start Tony Pollard more. If I were Dallas, I would be playing Tony Pollard more. He just doesn't look like he has Ezekiel Elliott. Nick says, this could, this would make a good film one day. Hey, Nick, do you think this story, well, obviously it can't be better than the 17 story because that team went on to win the Super Bowl. Guys, is there any similarities? I, I Yeah, yeah, East Canham, what is it, an ankle? I, was that in the Saints game he did that? Not the Saints game. What was that game? Carolina game? That he hurt himself. I saw him go out of bounds. He twisted his ankle. I thought it was something like that. It, does this have any similarities on how the 17 seed? Yeah, but the Eagles are on a winning streak. Well, they're on a winning streak now, aren't they? Okay? They're, they're on a winning streak now. I mean, the Eagles are on a winning streak now. Knee? Okay. Yeah, I agree with you, Ken. I think Pollard looks crisp right now. Backyard Birds podcast. That's because Zeke is tired and old. I don't think he's 30 years old, man. Isn't that crazy how these running backs just have few? Hey, there's a number of carries in every running back, right? Once they hit that number, it's like falling off a planet. Remember Todd Gurley? That guy was the highest paid running back. And as soon as he got that bag of money, what happened to him? He got that bag of money, and guess what happened? He fell off the planet. I'm not even sure he's in the league right now. Okay? Who would have thought that game potentially at the end of the year? How about this? That game at the end of the year at Lincoln Financial is clearly going to be a game that's going to either be for the NFC East or for a playoff seat. It's going to matter. Because I think the Eagles have a chance to win out. Just play to your strengths. Don't get crazy. And by the way, don't look at the next two opponents. You know, it's easy to go Giants and Jets and go, we got this. Okay? You got this? Don't worry about them. Worry about yourselves. Stay healthy. Do the right things. Keep working on your strengths. Don't, hey, as far as I'm concerned, smile. Watch this. He brings up the Detroit team. Pretend like that football team has no wins and you need that game and you need to go out there and you need to put up 40 points on that team. Go get it. Whether you're 10-0 and 0 or 0-10, 0 it shouldn't matter. It should not matter. Backyard says, I'm stoked, bro. I think the Eagles continue this. We could talk Super Bowl aspirations. I would never have said that. And you know what, Backyard? I'm going to pump the brakes on that yet. Let's get to the postseason. How about this, though? Isn't it great to do this? 
How about this though? Watch where we are now. We're to he's bringing up potential Super Bowl. I'm talking playoffs. I'm talking about eight seed in the NFC playoffs. And guess what? We're not talking anymore. Is Nick Sirianni one and done? Is Jalen the guy? Do they need to go get a quarterback? Holy crap, the general manager sucks. Look how that has stopped. Look at what winning does. Look at what winning does. This is a lesson for all of us here. Follow me, guys. You got to give things a chance to grow. So maybe the stupid flower thing, <laughs> I don't know. He's three and one since the stupid flower thing, Sirianni. Maybe there's something to it, man. Maybe there's something to it here. Brandon says, can you see if they can get Schicker from BSU? Um, the linebacker, I saw that game today. I was by, by the way, before I came on, I was watching San Diego State. In Boise State, they got two linebackers that can play. Dude, stop with the whole, all hail Howie. I'm not going there. Muhammad says, Eagles are blooming, Dan. <laughs> yeah. Omar, Omar, really? Patience is a virtue. Ugh. Give me a break. <laughs> Give me a break. Yeah, man. I, I, you know, I was watching these games, and after the Dallas loss, I went, oh, yeah, hey, wait, Ken just has a new name for this year's version of the Philadelphia Eagles. Steel Magnolias. <laughs> Such a wormy name. Oh, the 2021 Philadelphia Eagles, Steel Magnolias. Oh, my God. Our chance says, I hope he comes up with these, the craziest analogies just to have people eat their own words. Going forward, dude. I, I man, hey, what well, you know how much crow I've eaten today, Archan? Do you know how much crow I've eaten on this team? I don't recognize it from the beginning of the year to right now. It's unbelievable, man. It's unbelievable. By the way, that Raider loss that the Cowboys have, you can't lose at home like that, guys. To a team that's a complete chaotic mess. That Raider team is in chaos. Owner has to deal with a coach passing racist emails. Kid kills somebody, DUI. You got another guy with an inappropriate tweet. You got a head coach who's kind of a head coach, and you got people in that organization. And there you got Derek Carr settling it and settling it down. And they win a game. That was a big game for the Raiders, man. That was a huge game for the Raiders. Massive game for the Raiders. And they keep their season, and they keep their hopes alive for potentially making it to the postseason. Good for the Raiders, man. And the, there's Dallas talking. By the way, Amari Cooper not being vaccinated, what does he have to do with stopping the run? Isn't it funny how Dallas will always try to find excuses? And they'll always look for somebody to be a scapegoat in it. But they won't ever look at themselves and say, well, we got to run the ball more. Hey, hey, Nick, that's really dope, man. Thank you. Thank you. That'd be quite an honor. How can I be? How can I be the godfather, though? A kid. <laughs> hey, Hugh. Hey, Hugh, Carr is crazy. He's crazy good. He's maybe one of the most underrated guys. I think he's like one of the only guys ever to get out seven years in a row or eight years in a row with over 3,000 passing yards, it's crazy great. But because he's on the left coast, nobody knows him, you know, and they don't really keep a, uh, you know, they don't really keep eyeballs on him. But Derek Carr can play. Birdman. <laughs> yeah, no, no, no. <laughs> no! Are you kidding? <laughs> he's canon. They're always making excuses to Cowboys. Always. And the owner doesn't help, man. He completely undermines the head coach, Mike McCarthy, when he's barking publicly on his radio show. Guys, this is what you should pray for. Let Jerry keep barking. 
Let people, hey, know this. Let everybody keep watching the Cowboys. Guys, don't make, do you know what the greatest thing in the world is? Coming from nowhere and shocking the world. Okay? Everybody's looking at the Cowboys. Let them have all the glory. Go ahead. Go ahead. Who cares? And then when you take it from them in the final regular season game, it, it means more. It's worth more. It's completely worth more. All right. I'm going to take a time out here. Merrill Reese is going to join us, the legendary voice of the Philadelphia Eagles. I'm going to ask him the same question. What's the difference between the first four games and these last four games of this Eagle team? It's incredible. Don't forget also Craig Carton from WFAN. We're going to talk some giant football. That's the Eagles' next opponent. That'll be at 5 o'clock Eastern time. You keep it right here on the National Football Show. At Stateside Vodka, every new customer gets the world's best rocks glass, free. What's that? Uh, a rocks glass? You're telling me that bottle is cut in half? You could say that. Holy shit. And you're telling me I can get one of these glasses for free? That's right. One free rocks glass per customer with each first-time purchase of Stateside Vodka. So good, it just disappears. When it comes to the fight against insurance companies, large corporations, and the healthcare industry, injured victims are always the underdog. But that doesn't worry us. At Messon Associates, we're an injury law firm from Philadelphia, and we come to fight. Our clients know that they've got representation with a chip on its shoulder, and it's the same chip that makes Philly the toughest city in the country. Call 215-568-3500, or visit us online at messalaw.com. Messa and Associates, the toughest injury firm in Philadelphia. On the field of life, First Trust Bank is there for you. Because Philadelphia dreams deserve a Philadelphia bank. Go for the midnight dares. Go for the game. Go for the hits. Go for the fans. Go for the win. Go to Ocean Casino Resort. Book your trip at theoceanac.com. At Stateside Vodka, every new customer gets the world's best rocks glass. Free. You're telling me that bottle is cut in half? You... Could say that. Welcome back, National Football Show. Your boy Dan Stilio. Guys, please do me a favor. And you've been hitting it. I try to get to 100 likes by the end of the program. We do two hours. Please bang on that like button. We so appreciate it when you do. Thank you so much. By the way, Merrill Reese will join us here in a couple seconds, a legendary voice of the Philadelphia Eagles. May I please send a message out to CBS? Look, CBS had a great game. They had a monster, monster number. 40 million Americans watch that Raider and Cowboy game. Okay, but can you do me a favor? Can you send Tony Romo a note to take his Dallas Cowboy knee pads off when he's calling a game? I mean, Jesus, dude. Between Aikman and Romo, I know it's two different networks, but holy cow, man, it was all day knee pad Dallas Cowboys. Oh, man. I mean, I, I, mean, I know those guys were disappointed. 
and the cowboy performance. I I, I get that, but I mean, really? <laughs> Holy cow. Unbelievable. All right. Don't forget, Craig Carton will join us at the top of the hour from WFAN. We will talk to our friend and get his thoughts on the Giants. That's the Eagles' next opponent. And we bring in our friend and legendary voice of the Philadelphia Eagles. He is our friend. It's Merrill Reese. And Merrill, I hope you had a spectacular Thanksgiving. And when the Cowboys lose and there's food, I'm assuming it was a good day in the Reese household. Well, it was a good day for the Eagles in terms of uh, having a chance to, at some point, catch the Cowboys. Although I tell people, just just hold on a little bit. All this means is that the NFC East is not the lock it appeared to be about three weeks ago. That's all it means. But the Cowboys are still very much in command. Absolutely. Merrill, um, I had Gary Cobb on a couple days ago, and he and I can't believe what we're watching. Merrill, for you... First four games of the season for the Eagles versus the last four games. What has been the difference in your view watching this football game as they're growing and moving forward? Well, I just think they're growing. I think I think you used the right word. They're growing. Uh, listen, players play very little in the preseason. It's it's not the way it used to be. When Dick Vermeule brought 120 people to camp and they had six preseason games, now the Jalen Hurts had six snaps a total of six, six snaps in the entire preseason. The uh, training camp was light. They did have dual workouts with the Jets and Patriots, but it's not the same as a game. So the team had to grow. Really, if, if you look at Jalen Hurts, he started four games last year. He started 11 this year. So he's basically, in terms of, in terms of play, he's basically a rookie. And I think if he actually was a rookie, he'd be the NFC Rookie of the Year. That's how well he's playing. But they've had to get, get used to him. They've had to adjust the offense to fit his, fill, uh, fit his skill set. I think he's done very, very well. You know, you, you, you bring up Jalen, and I'm going to make a comparison that I've been making a comparison with Jalen. He reminds me of Steve McNair, Merrill, and the way that he plays the game. Not always the highest completion percentage, and it was unconventional in what we were watching. But the number one thing that he moved beside the chains – was the one loss column. And when you're watching something like this, it's almost a 2.0 version of what we're seeing in Baltimore. They're winning a boatload of their games, and I happen to agree with you. And I'm going to give you some stats here. Jalen Hurts is on pace for 3,600 passing yards, 970 rushing yards, 23 touchdowns to six picks, 92 quarterback rating. For a guy like myself who wasn't sold on him at the beginning of the year, and Pamela Ertz asked me if I was a hater at the beginning of the year. And I told her, I go, no, I just was a non-believer. You know, Merrill, I believe this kid's the future of this football team. Do you? I do. I, I absolutely do. And I think I, I've heard writers, I've read things that they've written and they, they've questioned his arm strength. Then he throws lasers. He's got a terrific arm. He needs to work a little more on his accuracy from inside the pocket. And that's new to him. But he's doing it more and more. I don't know if you saw the game against the uh, the Chargers three weeks ago, the game they lost. He threw a dart right into the smallest window to Devontae Smith for a 30-plus yard game. I mean, he gets better and better every week. He's got an above-average NFL arm, not just a, a, an NFL arm, an above-average NFL arm. And some people say, well, let's see how he does when he has to throw – more than 20, 22 passes a game. Let me tell you, if they get into a situation like that, his arm is going to be fine. He's going to surprise a lot of people, but he gets better and better. And what you just said, he's a winner. He's a winner. He's driven. He And he's a leader. He's a tremendous leader. Everybody on this team feels that way about Jalen Hurts. I think this is me, not Howie Roseman. So I don't know what the organizational thinking is, but in terms of my estimation, he is the quarterback of the future. You know, I'm going to get to Howie here in a second, but I want to go to Sirianni here now. Now I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to lay it out because these have been the tale of two, of two seasons almost wrapped in one here, Merrill. I mean, you know, Nick Sirianni at the beginning of the year, I'm doing this. This guy's a one and done guy. I just don't see it. I think the I think the the locker room is leaving him. And all of a sudden. 
they decide to make a commitment to running the ball. And all of a sudden, I see the players charge. I saw Malata on the sidelines uh, against the Saints, picking up his quarterback, pushing a D lineman around. Don't touch our guy. It was that blue, you know, it was that lunch pail mentality. I got to tell you, the reason that the players, I think, Merrill, started galvanizing themselves around Nick Sirianni is because his willingness to adapt. They went to from those RPOs to running the ball. They changed it up on defense, which means to me as a former player, this coaching staff listens. I'm I'm falling in love with Nick Sirianni here and how he's how he's running this team. Are you? He's a very very bright guy. He's a very very easy guy to like. He he's down to earth. The players do. They were never in danger of leaving him. Dan, uh, it's a new coach coming in and it's a wait and see type process. Don't forget. Andy Reid came in here, and he was 0-5 when he stole. Nick Vermeil, who I think is the greatest coach they've ever been around, he was 0 for something his first year. I mean, 0-4, 0-5. They didn't win very, very quickly. But what we're seeing is a coach growing along with his team. Don't forget, he is a first-time head coach. Andy Reid had an advantage in that he came here with Rod Dauhauer, a former NFL head coach and Stanford head coach, as his offensive coordinator and a veteran defensive coordinator by the name of Jim Johnson, who really should be in the Hall of Fame. But that's time for another discussion because I believe coordinators should be in the Hall of Fame. But he came with an experienced staff. Dick Vermeil, the same thing. Here is here is Nick Sirianni, and he's brought in a lot of bright coaches, but they are young coaches. They're first-time coordinators. But look, they're growing as a staff. They're doing a good job, and this team is getting better and better, and they're five and six right now and, and very much in the hunt. But, you know, if, if they lose to the Giants, all that stuff goes out the window, and it's fire Nick, and where are they going from here, and who's your quarterback? You know how fans are. They're great, passionate football fans. But uh, this is a dangerous game for them because the Giants, if you look at the Giants roster, they've got talent. Daniel Jones – may turn it over too much, but he's a dangerous quarterback. With his arm, we've seen him run 50 yards against the Eagles. He tripped over a yard line, but but he can take off. Uh, they've got receivers that can burn you. Uh, Saquon Barkley can break one at any time. They've got some good defensive players. They are a dangerous team despite their record. And, and, and I've said this before, Merrill, when I was in the league and I was – just realizing what you just said, we're playing against Lindy and Fani back in the day, the old Green Bay Packer coach, right? And these guys had won only four games. I'm like, oh, these guys suck. We'll kill these teams. I get in there and I'm like, holy cow, they beat us by 10. And I'm going like, man, the difference in this league is probably 20 plays a game and the closeness of everything in the league today. I mean, the difference between a seven-win team and a 10-win team is probably 20 plays. In your time covering the league, have you ever seen the league so competitive like this? No, I haven't. And where were you and last week, somebody remember one of the things people were saying is Tennessee might be the best team of all. And then they lost to Houston. <laughs> they lost to Houston. And, right. and look, I love David Culley, but he's got a tough job there without the quarterback that he could have had, without a, a talented roster. But still, it was it was Houston beating Tennessee, who looked like the team to beat. Going into the season, a lot of people figured that Buffalo was going to make it from the AFC, and they have stumbled. Now, they won last night, but they have not had an easy going. It's been tough. Tampa Bay, how about the games they've lost? Yeah. So, I mean, it's, it's, very, it's, it's a very balanced league. Just when you are ready to anoint a team as the best in their division or the best in their conference or the best in football, they slide backwards. There is no team right now that I can sit here and say they are going to the Super Bowl because none of us really know. How about this, Merrill? You know, I here, 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 here. You know, I've been I've been covering the Eagles from thirty thousand feet, and now I'm kind of looking the team in the eye, and I'm covering it more on a on a daily basis. I said the same crap that everybody else did about Howie Roseman, but follow me here. So this dude has 11 draft choices in the 2022 draft. He most likely will be $50 million under the salary cap. His quarterback that he traded up for, I said it last week, 
he is a second rounder. And everybody in Philly said, that guy's not a second rounder. Hell, if you put that guy in the draft this year, he may be a middle to end first round draft choice. So you're talking about value that has increased itself because of the play. He goes out and re-signs Mulata, Sweat, he Edwards. He goes yeah. out and puts uh, Goddard. All these guys now are on second-year contracts. The Darius Slay move. Now, look, I get the Riegers of the world, and every general manager is not 100% on draft choices or free agents. But Merrill, I didn't think moving off a of Doug or moving off a of Wentz, who's playing great in Indy, but I didn't know if that would – I got to tell you, Howie has done a hell of a job here, man. If this thing, like you say, Giants and Jets don't lay down against this, but – Man, I got to tell you, man, I think Howie Roseman's done a hell of a job with this football team over the well, last few years. Well, I'll give you a great move. How about you standing sixth in the draft, and the player you really want is Devontae Smith, and he manages to move from sixth to twelfth and pick up a first-round draft pick from the Dolphins and then move back to ten and get Devontae Smith, who he wanted to begin with. And that's a great draft pick. And then even if you go back and it didn't ultimately work out, but the drafting of Carson Wentz, where he gave up Byron Mark, Maxwell, and Kiko Alonso, and ends up trading with Cleveland and moves into the second spot and gets Wentz, who had a great rookie year and a great second year. He was probably the MVP of the league if he hadn't suffered the knee injury in Los Angeles. So to get that now, it didn't go well from there on in. But the way Carson Wentz started out here, he was a great draft pick. Merrill, have you ever seen a couple couple last questions for you, Merrill? Um, have you ever seen and covered a team like this that it's been so cardiac? Like you know, remember the old Cleveland Browns? They were called the cardiac kids. Have you have you ever seen anything like this where a team has just completely changed, or where maybe maybe Merrill, I'm wrong, and that they didn't have an identity early on, and maybe now they just found it because I don't think I've ever seen a team just change their identity without making any player moves. Well, you know, have you ever very, seen an Eagle team that you've ever covered that, that has ever gone through this transformation in front of you like this so quick? Not so much stylistically or schematically, but when you're talking about teams, how about a couple of years ago, not last year, but the year that Doug's uh, next to his last year when this team was dead in the water and then won all those conference games at the end and made the playoffs. Uh, that that was a pretty big comeback, and, and a lot of those games were last-second games that they pulled out. Uh, but things have changed. Interesting word, identity, because somebody at the at the media conference, we sit in the tent outside freezing these days, but nobody goes inside. In fact, would you believe I haven't met anybody from the last two years? I because can't believe that, no access for any of us. We can't. It's crazy. We can't no access. We're still not traveling with the team. But uh, aside from all of that, uh, a week ago at his media briefing, uh, Jalen Hurst was asked about the identity of this team. And Jalen Hurst said, the identity of this team is not whether you throw it or run it. The identity of this team is a bunch of guys who arrive at practice each day determined to be better than they were the day before. A bunch of guys who really like each other, who really pull for each other, who come in and they have a winning attitude. They're prepared to do anything it takes to put this team in position to win each week. He said, that is the true identity of this team. You talk to Jalen Hurts. He's had, he had a great game against Kansas City. He had a pretty good game against the Chargers. He didn't want to talk about that when asked about his performance. He said, we lost. That's, that's how I feel about it. We lost. You win or you lose. We lost. And when he wins, he said, we win. He, he doesn't take any credit for himself. He really doesn't, but he goes out there, and that's why his teammates love him. Finally here, um, you know how many people have come on our show? We get a bunch of people now, and all the Eagle fans are now watching us. And you know what they say? It's fun to root for this team. It's a lunch pail team. It's a blue-collar team. And it's kind of like the city, isn't it? It. This is the kind of team that you kind of want to root for because, again, like you said, Merrill, you got a quarterback that just wants to go to work and win ball games. You got a defense that just wants to make plays. You got an offensive line. It's not fancy. It's just lining up 50 times, running people over. This is kind of like the identity of Philly. And I think that's why you're seeing fans at the link cheering for this thing. 
You know, Dan, they may be one of the top three offensive lines in the National Football oh, yeah. League. They, they have a great coach in Jeff Statlin, but you look at them left to right, and they're missing their starting guards. I mean, Brandon Brooks is out. Siamalo's out. And young guys have come in, and they're doing the job. Landon Dickerson, what a what a great guy he's had to be able to put in there at left guard. And Mylotta, to think that they drafted him in the seventh round, and he had never played a football game in his life. And I want to tell you something. Uh, maybe not this year, but he's going to have a long run of Pro Bowl appearances. He is a dominating offensive lineman. He's a terrific player. And Lane Johnson. Lane Johnson had his problems earlier, came went away, came back with a, a fresh feeling. And he has had, I don't think he's ever had a better season. And and Jason Kelsey, I mean, every year he says, well, I, I've got to decide whether I want to come back. He's He's been great. He has played at his absolute peak. This is a this is a heck of an offensive line, and you know, as the lines go, so go the teams. I mean, I that it, it all starts with who's pushing who backwards, or who's getting through the other team's front four. You know, it's it's that's what it's all about. It starts at the lines, and that's where the Eagles' greatest strength is. I'm going to leave you with this: that kid Kelsey is the best center I've seen since Kevin Mawai. And that means he's a Hall of Famer. I could not believe I him. Skip, I could not believe in the last game I saw him get out on the edge, slip up on the linebacker, and then scoop up on a cornerback. And I'm sitting there going like this. This guy's in his 11th year doing that? That's insanity <laughs> to see somebody doing that. Merrill, he's a Hall of Famer. I didn't think he was until I watched him. He's a Hall of Fame center. Oh, he is. Yeah, and you know what makes Nick so likable? He was asked about that block. And he said the only other person he saw throw that block was Billy Bob in Varsity Blues. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Merrill, have a great call against the Giants. Thank you so much on this Turkey Friday doing this going into the weekend. Thank you, my friend. Always nice to see you, Dan. Take care. Have a great weekend. Great. Happy holiday to you, too. We'll take a brief time out. Craig Carton at the top of the hour, live from New York. You keep it right here on the National Football Show. <laughs> At Stateside Vodka, every new customer gets the world's best rocks glass, free. What's that? Uh, a rocks glass? You're telling me that bottle is cut in half? You could say that. Holy shit. And you're telling me I can get one of these glasses for free? That's right. One free rocks glass per customer with each first-time purchase of Stateside Vodka. So good, it just disappears. When it comes to the fight against insurance companies, large corporations, and the healthcare industry, injured victims are always the underdog. But that doesn't worry us. At Messon Associates, we're an injury law firm from Philadelphia, and we come to fight. Our clients know that they've got representation with a chip on its shoulder, and it's the same chip that makes Philly the toughest city in the country. Call 215-568-3500, or visit us online at messalaw.com. Mesa and Associates, the toughest injury firm in Philadelphia. On the field of life, First Trust Bank is there for you. Because Philadelphia dreams deserve a Philadelphia bank. Go for the midnight dares. Go for the game. Go for the hits. Go for the fans. Go for the win. Go to Ocean Casino Resort. Book your trip at theoceanac.com. At Stateside Vodka, every new customer gets the world's best rocks glass. Free. 
You're telling me that bottle is cut in half? You could say that. Silio. National Football Show. Guys, please like the show. We so appreciate you guys jumping aboard with us as you do each and every single day, man. You guys have been spectacular. Thank you again, man. You're banging on that like button, too. How about Merrill Reese saying that Jalen Hurts is the guy? Guy has watched more Eagle football than anybody in your city. Well, next to the fans. Okay. Next to the fans, because the fans have watched more than any network dude or anybody covering your team. You guys are some of the most incredible fans I've ever seen. I mean, you know the history of the team. You know everything, what's going on with that team. So make no mistake about it here, guys. He thinks he is the guy moving forward. And, you know, he, he, he's watching him. He's around the team. He's talking to people in the front office. There must be a vibe in that Eagle front office now that has gone from this. Guys, would we not say this? Look, look, okay. If you're Howie Roseman and you're doing this and you start the 2021 season off, what do you think the prospects were of Jalen Hurts being the, the franchise guy moving forward past the 2022 season and beyond scale of one to 10. If you're Howie Roseman or anybody with a brain in her head, four, and that might be generous. You don't know. He's not a stopgap guy. You don't know that. And if you thought enough about him, you'd have drafted him in the first round. So you sit there. I mean, Hey, by the way, do you really think when the New England Patriots drafted Tom Brady, they thought he was going to be a guy who was going to play 20 years in New England at quarterback? Come on, give me a break. Everybody knows that. Dupree says that's the most hyped he's seen Merrill in a long time. Okay? That's a great comment. DeSante, that's a great comment. I hadn't thought about that, but you're right. Shakur says it's still early, but Cowboy fans talking smack in September and in October. Tell you what, man, you know what they're doing right now? Cowboy fans are starting to do this. Ugh, uh, yeah. Ooh, ooh. Hey, by the way, how many have they lost in a row now? Three? Is it three or four they've lost in a row now? How many have they lost in a row? Hey, look, and guys, I know I, I, I can't keep giving Howie all this love, man, but you got to start right. When you start writing things down and you see how this team's playing and you see how that quarterback's playing and you see how all this is really playing out here, guys, got to give a dude his dues, man, when he starts performing here. 50 under the cap, 11 picks, right? Can you imagine if the Eagles don't have to go into next April draft looking for a quarterback? Giants have to go into next April's draft looking for a quarterback or a free agent guy. I personally don't think there's anybody in that draft worth the hell that you're just going to give a first-round draft choice up and bring him into New York. I, I just don't, I don't see it, okay? And then you got the Jets on the flip side of that. I think Zach Wilson's going to play this week. Zach Wilson's a turnover machine. I think he's a little bit better of a version than Ma Baker Mayfield, but I don't think anything of Baker Mayfield yet. So, I mean, guys, this, this, this dude, Howie Roseman, is aiming your team in the right direction. Kevin says, may have to give Howie a mulligan. 
Paul says Cowboys have lost three or four games. Lost the Broncos, beat Falcons, lost the Chiefs and Raiders. Thank you, Paul. Appreciate that. Thank you. Old Cole says, if we make the playoffs, it'd be like Howie. <laughs> yeah, right, man. Hey, dude, if Howie Roseman and Nick Sirianni make the playoffs, guys, Sirianni would be the coach of the year. Okay? Sirianni would be the coach of the year. You may see Jalen Hurts in the Pro Bowl. All the things we were saying, including me, at the beginning of the year, no way. Absolutely no way. No way. Unbelievable. Okay? Unbelievable. All right. So I just got a text message from our boy Craig Carton. Okay? So we're going to get Craig on at 530 Eastern time. It'll be on at 5.30 Eastern time, okay? Just so you know. We'll do 5.30 with him. So he's got to do a little bit, moving around there a little bit there. So my boy Xander, thank you, Xander. We got it there. So that means more with us here. DeSante says leadership. Eagles, three selections in the first round are going to be 10-22 range. Ken says tailgating at the Cowboys. You win, Dano? Hey, listen. Um, absolutely. You know what? Hey, I'll say this to you. Um, if Xander's already said it too, guys, if that game is for playoffs or for the NFC East, Big Sills is gonna be in Philly and we're gonna find a location and all of and everybody's invited. Everybody. Everybody. And we'll just sit around there and we'll just start talking trash. I'm in. Hey, getting big sills out of the Dan Cave, do you know how incredible that is? Guys, I don't do very many interviews, and nor do I go very many places. But I would do that. Okay? I, I would do that. Hey, I want to I show you guys something, too. The coaching of Sirianni over the last couple months, really month and a half here, did you see Dan Campbell at the end of that Bears game calling back-to-back -back timeouts, um, then having to call another timeout? The clock management was so pathetic at the end of that game. Dude, he may be a good coordinator, but his clock management, that was one of the worst examples of coaching I have ever seen. And when you're a player and you got a coach – that is not helping you win a game and you haven't won one all year and you're getting in the way of a win, that is so defeating. But when you see a coach like Nick Sirianni that changed on the fly, guys, they changed on the fly. They changed on the fly. We got to run the ball. Everybody in that locker room went like this. Dude, this guy... This is what it's all about here. He's listening. You know, maybe that was one of the things that Doug didn't do. It was my way or the highway, Peterson. You know, Doug's got a little bit of that in him. So maybe Sirianni was listening to his guys. I'm not saying that you go with what your players in the locker room are saying. You don't want the asylum running your coaching staff. But you know what you do do? You have to listen to your guys. That's got to be one of the things, man, that you, you, you know, that's, that, that's what makes you a coach. My players are saying this. We want to do this. So he put it on the players back. Okay. This is what you want to do. Fine. We're going to construct a game plan and we're going to move forward with that game plan. And we're going to go and let the chips fall where they may. That's exactly how this Man, I can't. Hey, I'm like Meryl Reese, man. That's inspiring. And Meryl's jacked up. You see him? He's excited about his team. He wasn't the most excited guy on the planet. Kevin, Doug was stubborn in his own way, wasn't he? He was. 
BF says agreed. I wanted Sirianni fired after the first half of the season or the first half of Dallas. But credit to him, he changed. BF, that's what I – BF, you're such a great person that is now on our show. That's exactly the kind of person that I love on my program. He and I will look at something and go like this because many of you do the same thing. We see something that we said, we're, we all go like this. Fuck, I may be wrong. I may be fucking wrong here on this. This guy may be the right thing. I'm why he's a coach and I'm a fan. All right. Let's take a timeout. This giant game. What has to happen for the Eagles to beat the Giants? Okay? Real quick, Dan. You know your shirt is inside out. Yeah, I know. It's a religious thing. I'll explain on the other side. Craig Carton will join us in hour two. You keep it here on the National Football Show. <laughs> At Stateside Vodka, every new customer gets the world's best rocks glass, free. What's that? Uh, a rocks glass? You're telling me that bottle is cut in half? You could say that. Holy shit. And you're telling me I can get one of these glasses for free? That's right. One free rocks glass per customer with each first-time purchase of Stateside Vodka. So good, it just disappears. When it comes to the fight against insurance companies, large corporations, and the healthcare industry, injured victims are always the underdog. But that doesn't worry us. At Mess and Associates, we're an injury law firm from Philadelphia, and we come to fight. Our clients know that they've got representation with a chip on its shoulder, and it's the same chip that makes Philly the toughest city in the country. Call 215-568-3500 or visit us online at messalaw.com. Mess and Associates, the toughest injury firm in Philadelphia. On the field of life, First Trust Bank is there for you. Because Philadelphia dreams deserve a Philadelphia bank. Go for the midnight dares. Go for the game. Go for the hit. Go for the fans. Go for the win. Go to Ocean Casino Resort. Book your trip at theoceanac.com. At Stateside Vodka, every new customer gets the world's best rocks glass. Free. You're telling me that bottle is cut in half? You could say that. Welcome back. National Football Show, Dan Silio. I went to bed at 7.30 last night. I ate so much food, I said, I got, I got to go lay down, man. Stuffing. Hey, and, and know this, too. Maybe it's because um, I'm Italian and all, but I like dark meat, you know? I'm more of a leg guy. How you doing? Is that a leg? Hey. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, stuffing. Deviled eggs. Oh. Then we had, like, a cheesecake, too. Like, a hunk. A hunk. Man. Beers. Oh, football. Dude, right? I'm so happy. Hey, guess what, guys? I was like, I probably could be talking to four people today. I was like, there's four. You guys are awesome because I know you're in the same boat I'm in. Tell me you're not, man. Okay? Hugh Carton will be with us. He texts us. He had something else pop up, so he's going to join us at the bottom of the hour. Yeah, he's one of my boys, man. I love him. Oof. 
Yeah, WFAN's Craig Carton will join us. We'll talk some giant football with him at the bottom of the hour. Oh, <laughs> yeah, dude, right? Hey, you lost me on the devil thanks. Really? You don't like devil thanks? Oh, get hey, just Mike. You know what I used to do for a beer drinking game when I was in college? You ready for this? So I used to get hard boiled eggs. Oh, this is disgusting. And I used to take the yolk out and I used to take Tabasco sauce. They're called atomic eggs. And I used to gun them. And I used to, then I used to, you, you, you gun a, um, a tequila, then you gun, then you do a chaser with a beer. Try that one. <laughs> oh man. Oh my God, obnoxious. But that was in my younger days. I'm no longer afforded or given the ability to be able to do anything like that because that would take me about four days to recover from. Hey, by the way, guys, please, what a great first hour, man. You guys were awesome. Please hit the like button, man. You guys are just great. Thank you for joining us on this Thanksgiving Friday, football Friday as we go into the weekend. How about Ohio State, Michigan, too, on Saturday for your liking? Then we got Eagles and Giants. Some other significant games, too. But that will be played this weekend, too. Baker Mayfield and the Browns take on the Ravens. Hey, who would have ever thought – You know, you, who do you guys think? I thought about this in the timeout. I want to show you guys something here. Do you who would you say are the two most improved football teams going into the stretch run of the NFL playoff race? Eagles are one of them. Do you know who I think the other one is? I think it's the Patriots. They got the Titans this week. Am I crazy when I say this? I think the Patriots might be the best team in the AFC. Why don't we want to go there? They may be absolutely the best team in the AFC. Right? Shakur says, Big Sills, you're doing a great job. Love the show. Man, I love you guys. You guys are great. Thanks, Nick, for coming back, man. That's always big. Somebody leaves and comes back. I could have used you in radio, Nick. <laughs> when you leave and come back, I could have used you in radio back in the day. Buckeyes, baby. James says, certainly the best defense. Just Mike, Cincinnati has shown some improvement too. Yeah, Mike, they have. But we not will we not agree that the Eagles are in the five-team conversation when it comes to the most improved teams at this point of the season here on November 26th? Am I right when I say that? Oscar, thank you. We're so happy that you're here with us, man. Thank you. You guys all mean everything to me. Okay? You do. Without you guys, I'm nowhere. Isn't that funny? I don't know why I had such a hard time saying that when I was on the air before. Been on the air for 33 years. I don't know why I had a hard time saying that. I'm not on the air if I'm the, I don't have you guys. Just... I think people's egos get in the way. Maybe mine too. You know what I'm saying? Gary, does Philly win out? Gary, how about this? What's the That's a great question. Xander, put up Gary there. Gary's new to the show. Does Philly win out? Who's got the harder path to the end of the season? Cowboys or the Eagles? I think the Cowboys do. Don't they have the Cardinals and um, the Eagles? Don't go to sleep on Washington, too. They still got to play the Redskins. James says, Patriots defense. Dude, that kid, Judon, is some pass rusher. He is great. James says, split with Washington. Yeah, that divisional stuff is always tough, right? <laughs> hey, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, Cole. Took some mushrooms and it kills the ego. Yeah, may try it. <laughs> Birdman, we do need 100 likes, man. Come on, guys. Every show that we've done this week has hit it. Every show. It's Caster Green. Philly doesn't win out. We stumble against the Giants. 
once, maybe. Hey, Caster, just don't lose to the fucking Jets. Don't lose to the Jets because that would be like a mind you-know-what. You know what I mean? Don't lose to the Jets. <sighs> Cowboys have a Thursday night game with the Saints. Saints will be healthy. to getting their dudes back. I don't know. That ain't, that ain't going to be a layup. The Cowboys can't run the ball anymore. Get this. The Cowboys can't run the ball and stop the run. You think that's a remedy for a disastrous finish? If I were Skip Bayless and all these Cowboy fans, I would be a little bit suspect in what I'm seeing with the Cowboys. I can't run the ball or stop the run. What are the two things that the Eagles are doing the best at? Running the ball and stopping the run. Guys, I don't know. My team looks better than... Hey, is this fair? Is this fair when I say this? The Eagles are playing better football right now than the Cowboys. BF, I think Zeke is done too. Are they playing better football right now than Dallas? Oh, Paul, did the Saints look terrible? They got to get that quarterback straightened out, man. And by the way, why are they giving Tyson Hill $95 million? Do you know he's thrown less than 200 career passes? I don't get that. He's made $53 million so far. What is his love affair with Tyson Hill, Sean Payton? I am so not seeing that. DeSante says, if we win our next two games, I'm going to get to Giants in a second here. Jason, if our monster O-line can get it done, they're going to win the rest of the way. Dude, that O-line is looking like your 17 O-line. It really is. Birdman, I don't get this Tyson Hill thing. The Eagles are playing better football, guys than the Dallas Cowboys right now. You know, I said it yesterday to you, or the day before. I said it to you. I'd like to play. I can't wait to play these Cowboys at Lincoln Financial. You're going to have a fan base at that place that's going to want blood on them. Can you imagine if you knock a $42 million quarterback out of the playoffs? Everyone's like this right now. Dallas still has the upper hand. Merrill Reese is right. They do. But what I'm watching, I'm looking at this thing systematically melt down in front of me. We've seen this before, this pattern. Tone says Philly versus Dallas may be for the division title. Tone, that would be one of the biggest games in Philadelphia football history during the Super Bowl era. Outside of 17's run, this could be one of the biggest games they've ever had. Biggest games they've ever had. Gary says, Kelsey, best center to play? No. But he's a Hall of Famer, Gary. Okay? He's a Hall of Famer. Spectacular. Spectacular. Spectacular player. Just, just a great football player. Eastside Monster, I, I like this, man. A1 million quarterback knocks out. Hey, right, a $42 million quarterback. That would be spectacular. Jalen Hurts on his second-round deal knocks out a $42 million dude. What an absolute gut punch to Jerry Jones that would be. Okay. What an absolute gut punch. Oh, and don't forget, you have to pay him the $40 million signing bonus. So in 2021, Dak Prescott's a $72 million quarterback. That guy's making $72 million this year. They got to pay him the, the signing bonus, too, on top of the 42. And if you have Jalen making a million dollars a year, knocking him out, I don't know how, if you're not Jerry Jones, you're doing this. That ain't 
quite the money investment that I'm looking at there. Okay? That's not quite what I'm looking at. 215 says, I celebrated with Cowboy fans when Dak got signed. But for different reasons. Yeah, because you know why? 215, you know what he's telling you with that statement right there? Put that one up too, Xander. You know what he's telling you there? He knew in his heart. Tell me if I'm wrong, 215. He knew in his heart things had to be perfect around him. He's not Patrick Mahomes. He's not Jason Allen or Josh Allen, excuse me. He's not Russell Wilson or Aaron Rodgers. If a couple pieces of the team aren't there, they could still carry you to the finish line, right? He knew immediately that that guy had to have everything perfect around him. Am I right when I say that, 215? In theory, he's saying he's overpaid. If Amari's not there, O-line's not healthy. He's got to have every, almost a Joe Flacco scenario. Everything's got to be great. Running game, old line, receivers making plays. Okay? He knew when he said, you signed that guy to a $42 million deal. Good luck to you. If one piece of your team's not there, he's not worth the shit. And he's playing out that way. You're being vindicated, 215. Bobby says Jerry Jones wanted to draft Hertz as an insurance policy for Dak. It's funny, Bobby. That's what Howie Roseman drafted Jalen for when it came to Carson Wentz. And guess what? That seatbelt may actually turn in to the guy who's going to drive you to another party and another victory party down Broad Street. Rico says that Dak is playing like the $1.1 million quarterback, and I would assume that you're saying that Jalen's playing like a $20 million a year quarterback. BF, with these O-line monsters, 250 yards against the Saints. Dude, get this too, and I told you this the last time that we were together. You don't run for 247 yards versus a Dennis Allen defense who's only surrendering 73 yards on the ground rushing. You don't do that to a team like that. You that is that's the best run-stopping defensive line in the NFL. And by the way, the Cowboys are facing that with all their guns next Thursday. They're going to struggle. They're going to struggle, the Cowboys. They can't stop it, and they can't run it. Guys, take care of your business. You know what I would be preaching right now? I would be preaching this if I was Nick Sirianni. Guys, don't listen to the noise. Don't read the newspapers. Don't be doing any of this. Let's take care of Eagle business. Showing up on time. Doing your workouts. Getting your treatment. Doing your homework. Studying. Tendencies. What's this team do? I told you this, guys, many times. When I played for Coach Jimmy Johnson, I never knew what the record of an opponent was because I never cared, and they never put it on any game plan. They never put the opponent's record on. I just knew who I was playing against. I knew what they were doing. I knew what they weren't doing. I knew where our strengths and our weaknesses were. I would put my pass rushing um, techniques together, my first five pass rushes against this particular dude. I would practice them all week. And then once I got into a game, they'd be second nature to me. I didn't give a shit what their record was. All I cared was that I had to do my job, my running, my working out, my attention to detail, my film study. Don't take anything for granted right now. 
How many times have we been watching this year? And I've been bringing it up to you numerous times. The, le- the parity in this league is second to none. It's the best the NFL has had in like ever when it comes to competition week in and week out. Anybody can bite anybody. Kyle says Russell Wilson will never be a giant. He's already spent years complaining about Seattle's O-line and the Giants are possibly the worst O-line in the NFL. Kyle, they are. But Kyle, get this. If I know that the New York Giants offensive line is the worst and it was on display, they were terrible. Okay? They were terrible on Monday night. They were just terrible, man. And the Bucks killed them. That old line is terrible. Attack it. Attack it. Go after it. Absolutely, man. Rico, stay focused on the team in front of you. Rico, next play, next series, next quarter, next half, the game. All I care about, I care about 60 minutes of football. My preparation, if I'm an Eagle guy for this week, is 60 minutes of preparation. That means I have to put a 1,000 hours of manpower in my preparation to play 60 minutes. Think of that. I need to. I used to have a rule. You have to put a 1,000 hours in of preparation for 60 minutes of football. 1,000 hours, working out, film study reading your playbook, watching film, practicing techniques, stretching, going to the trainer, getting treatment. That's how you remain focused. Staying in a routine. Don't come out of that routine. Don't come out of that routine because you have it in front of you here. Eagles are playing better than the Cowboys. We know this. But you know what, guys? We really can't say this when you're five and six. So you got to keep your fucking mouth shut when you're like this. Five and six. I can't say we're playing better because then they'll think we're Eagles and we don't want to be the Cowboys. Let them have all the cameras. It's never helped them. Who wants to be that? Who wants to be that? Man, I want to be in a place where my team and my fans understand what we're doing. We're running the ball. You fell in love with Gang Green for a reason. Because they killed people. Bodies all over the place at the vet. Right? That's the kind of mentality you have to have. I want to kill you every day. And metaphorically, know this, guys. I used to try to say to some of this stuff on the radio. Now you know why, right? People don't really like that on the radio because there's too many snowflakes. Body bags, Dupree. Let's get the old body bags out. Let's get them body, let's get them buddy Ryan body bags out again. Let's go get, let's go get some giant football. Speaking of that, I'm going to talk to my boy, Craig Carton, from WFAN. Giants look like they're in chaos. Don't go to sleep on that. Then they got the Jets on the flip side. So we'll talk to him, Giants and Jets. Those are the Eagles' next two opponents. We'll get his thoughts. Guys, please do me a favor. Like the show. Thank you so much for you guys coming aboard. Craig Carton coming up and back to you. You keep it here on the National Football Show. At Stateside Vodka, every new customer gets the world's best rocks glass, free. What's that? Uh, a rocks glass? You're telling me that bottle is cut in half? You could say that. 
Holy shit. And you're telling me I can get one of these glasses for free? That's right. One free rocks glass per customer with each first time purchase of stateside vodka. So good, it just disappears. When it comes to the fight against insurance companies, large corporations, and the healthcare industry, injured victims are always the underdog. But that doesn't worry us. At Messon Associates, we're an injury law firm from Philadelphia, and we come to fight. Our clients know that they've got representation with a chip on its shoulder. And it's the same chip that makes Philly the toughest city in the country. Call 215-568-3500 or visit us online at messalaw.com. Messon Associates, the toughest injury firm in Philadelphia. Field of life. First Trust Bank is there for you. Because Philadelphia dreams deserve a Philadelphia bank. Go for the midnight dares. Go for the game. Go for the hits. Go for the fans. Go for the win. Go to Ocean Casino Resorts. Book your trip at theoceanac.com. At Stateside Vodka, every new customer gets the world's best rocks glass. Free. You're telling me that bottle is cut in half? You could say that. Welcome back to the National Football Show. It's your boy, Dan Cilio. Thank you for coming aboard. We really appreciate everybody coming in, and thank you. Okay, thank you very much for coming aboard with us. By the way, do me a favor, okay? You can bang on that like button. You guys are almost at 100. I want to thank you very much. Xander says this too, guys. You can call him out for no music. Big Seals don't. Dude, I make my own music. We're good here, man. <laughs> hey, quite frankly. I don't really care. I'm just glad everybody's with us here. Keep banging on that like button. Thank you so much. Seriously, man, I thought Tony Romo and Troy Aikman were going to have knee injuries after the Cowboy loving and all the talking about the Cowboys. I mean, Troy Aikman at least didn't have the game. But Tony Romo, man, I thought Tony Romo was going to have a knee injury. It was. I was like, I'm, I'm watching Romo, man. I'm, I'm listening to him, too, and I'm going like, bro. Dude, this sounds like a Dallas Cowboy national broadcast. I was like, holy cow, get off your knees, dude. You are systematically all on your knee pads. Jerry, Jerry, Jerry. Oh, my God. D Dak is just, he's really, got, shut the hell up. The other guy outplayed him. He totally outplayed him. Derek Carr outplayed him. The Raider defense outplayed the Cowboy defense. There wasn't a part of that Cowboy team that outplayed the Raiders in that game. But if you listen to Tony Romeo, Tony Romeo was like, oh, my God, you know, many Cowboy. I thought he was going to have tears at the end of the game when they got beat. Hey, Cowboys, my guys lost in front of 40 million people. I was like, Jesus guy. Yeah, and you know, you know, I can't hey, and by the way, I kept thinking all you guys too. Can you imagine all those people in um in Eagle Country going like this? What a great hey, and by the way, I have gotten a lot more people saying I sound like I'm from South Philly. Okay. And I, I just kept thinking of you guys going like this. Hey, scoongeal, turkey, stuffing. And the fucking Cowboys lost. How you doing? How's that not a great day? How's that not a great day? <laughs> I was like, oh, wow, man. Yeah. But Tony Romeo, man, dude was all over his knee pads with the Cowboys. Had the stars on him and everything. 
I thought him and Jim Nance were going to start dancing and start doing like a hoedown or something. Was that what they call it? The Texas two-step? Come here, dear Jim Lance. Let's do a Texas two-step. Holy criminy. It was like a Dallas Cowboy broadcast. You see how great Doc is? Hey, Zeke may be, you know, a little banged up right now. No, how about he sucks? And your old line's banged up. And by the way, the guy across the way is out playing him in Derek Carr. What about some love for Carr? Who do you think was in more chaos going into that game? The Cowboys or the Raiders? I can't believe the Raiders have a plus 500 win percentage. All the crap that's gone on with that football team and that organization and that owner, and they're still winning, it's freaking unbelievable that the Raiders are still winning. And by the way, I thought they took care of the Giants. Or excuse me, of the of the Cowboys. I thought they handled them. Their old line handled them and their D line definitely got pressure on on Dak Prescott. But man, just hey, just 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 a little bit more. And by the way, you guys know because we've had Sean McManus, right, on the program. He's a childhood friend of mine. And I never thought about it, but I think I'm going to text Sean McManus. And I'm going to send Sean McManus a text. And I got to tell him, he's the chairman of CBS Sports. And he's been my friend for 50 years. We were, we've been friends since we were kids. His father's Jim McKay, by the way, in case you didn't know. But, dude, note to all the CBS execs at the NFL on CBS, hey, man, the <laughs> next time Tony Romeo does a Cowboy game, Dude, make sure he takes his cowboy knee pads off. They were very apparent that he had them on. Yeah, the guys were just phenomenal. They were just spectacular. Holy cow, dee dee da da. <laughs> I was like, give me a break, man. And then the other game, how about Matt Nagy? Matt Nagy's hugging his players and he beat the Lions. He beat the Lions to show you how tough that guy's year's gone. Okay, he needed a win against the Lions. <laughs> oh, and, and also, too, do me a favor, NFL. Don't ever put a game like that on again. Lions and Bears. That had to be the worst broadcast that Fox has ever done for an NFL game during turkey time, having those two sorry-ass teams on. That was brutal. That was the worst football game. I have ever watched. I'm sitting and I'm watching Dan Campbell coach like he's like in bitty football with his timeouts. The guy had no understanding. He had, he had no understanding of the rule book and how you call timeouts. You can't call back to back timeouts. Everybody knows that. Hell, you know that when you're playing like junior football or high school football, you know that. And there's Dan Campbell calling back-to-back -back timeouts. Bro, the head coach, that's all on you. That's what I say about Mike McCarthy. You know, as this race may come down between Dallas and Philly, okay, uh, Mike McCarthy is uh, really not the guy I'm going to trust. But just one more time, guys, just a note to my boy, um, uh, Sean McManus. Tell Tony Romeo to take his Dallas Cowboy knee pads off the next time he's broadcasting a Cowboy game. All right. I couldn't wait to get this guy on, man. He has a day off, and he's the afternoon drive host in New York at WFAN. And what a great year it's been for Craig Cart. He joins us now. And he gives us a good spin on two things. The worst football era in football in New York City's history, Giants and Jets. Okay. Craigie, it's been a great year for you, man. Thanks for doing this, brother. Uh, it's hard to hear you, but that's because I just walked outside of a bowling alley. So I, <laughs> I apologize for that. But, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's been a terrible decade for uh, New York football. You know, the Giants have the worst record over the last five years in the NFL. The Jets have the worst record over the last 10 years in the NFL. And it's so bad that, you know, a guy that nobody ever heard of named – where we come from, Mike Effin White comes in, looks competent, like he knows how to throw a spiral, and we anoint him the second coming of Joe Namath. So, that, and I'm a Jet fan, so that's where we are. It's sad, it's pathetic, and 
pick your favorite adjective. It probably applies. What happened to the Giants? I mean, in your opinion, Craig, are we going to look at a new head football coach, new general manager, and a new quarterback with the Giants? A uh, new general manager, I think, for sure. Uh, my gut tells me that the Maurer family is not keen on Jet-esque uh, head coach turnover. But I just, you know, if you know, I live in, like you live, uh, doing radio and TV in a merit-based society, right? Uh, it's not, oh, you're the coach's son, so you have to lead off and play shortstop. You know, we live and die based on performance. You knew it going back to college, playing ball, right? So I think it's the same now. It should be the same now. So if it's based on merit, they're all gone. I can't see how Dave Gettleman survives another losing season. He's the GM. I think the real big question mark for the Giants is, do they go out, whomever they bring in to run the franchise, do they stay committed to Danny Jones? He's competent for sure. Franchise quarterback hasn't taken that next step. Or do they think they've got the goods draft-wise, and I think they do, to try to go get, a Deshaun Watson, a Russell Wilson, you know, that type of player. But uh, short of that, you know, you're looking at average football at best. Craig, you, you've had four fucking years in New York to build an offensive line for the Giants. This guy Gettleman, man, four freaking years to build this whole line. And then we're looking at Daniel Jones. I can't tell if he's good or bad. I mean, then they fired Jason Garrett. Do you think that that was warranted that they found they fired Jason Garrett? No, I'm probably the only guy. I'm in a weird spot where I sit alone. I'm like Gilligan, uh, except I have no <laughs> friends on my island. I sit, I sit on this island, and to me, you know, firing Jason Garrett was like the New York Yankees firing their third base coach, Phil Nevin. All right, you know, the Lions and Tigers are angry, so give them a piece of meat. You know, when you have no offensive line – how can you judge an offensive coordinator? You know, and as you said, you know, when Dave Gettleman got here, he said he referred to them as hog mollies. He goes, I got to get some hog mollies in here. Well, it's five years later. Their offensive line is worse than the Jets. It's the worst in the NFL. And I don't see – so that becomes problematic, right? Because if you can't block anybody, how do I know if my quarterback can or cannot play? If I can't block anybody, how do I know if Saquon Barkley can really run the football or not? And on and on and on. So, you know, I don't think I don't think any of them are long for New York. I think you have an organization that has prided itself on winning, on stability, on competence. And it's not it hasn't been like this since the 1970s that they've had none of that. So I do think that, you know, the mob is heard, as I always say on our show. You know, we being the fan base, we're the mob. The mob's never lost the game. And there does come a point where you start hearing that mob and you make decisions accordingly. But it's going to be an ugly Christmas, an ugly New Year. And then we'll hope that the New York Knicks can win a couple basketball games. And that's it. <laughs> that's the only thing you're hanging your hat on. I see on Twitter. I got two questions for the Jets here. Are you buying Robert Saley? Wow, you know, it's funny. I was until this whole quarterback stuff because he's been so up and down and left and right about who his starting quarterback is or going to be. Listen, I think Robert Sala, he's going to have a chance to do it. Uh, I don't, we're not obviously going to cut bait after a year or even two. I think he's got some, some runway at this. But I'm concerned that he wasn't – they made a decision to start Joe Flacco last week and it wasn't based on the future of the Jets, and that bothered me. They started Joe Flacco specifically because the building needed a win. They needed a win in the worst way. And Joe Flacco, because he's a veteran, because he'll recognize blitz packages more than Mike White or Josh Johnson or you know, Zach was hurt, Zach Wilson. So when you start making decisions to win a singular game in a season that's already lost, I start worrying. That raises a red flag for me because we can accept lose. We know we're going to lose, but as long as we lose in the name of developing what we think is a franchise quarterback. So if we've developed Zach Wilson into a franchise quarterback, you know, five and 12 this year is acceptable because we know going forward, we got a quarterback. Uh, so I believe in him still to answer your question. Yes. But now there's some flags that are being raised that, you know, he'll have, he also has some game day decisions that bother me. 
like not calling timeout, fourth and one, letting a play clock expire. You know, all those little those things that te- you know, fans of really well-coached teams take for granted because it happens like it's rote memory. You know, Bill Belichick doesn't miss a timeout, right? You know, thing, uh, we always go to Bill because he's the best. But Robert Sala, having never been a head coach, has made some in-the-moment mistakes, you know, that you worry about for sure. And I think you know better than me. I think players see that too. Oh, absolutely. You saw it with Dan Campbell. You saw it yesterday with Dan Campbell, Craig. I mean, look at how he effed up that entire timeouts, back-to-back timeouts. And the players go like this. You know, you're going to lose games to what you said, Craig. You're going to lose games, but don't help – don't have my coach help me lose games. Exactly, exactly. Yeah, and so I, th- I think they all view him like we all do. First year coach, he gets, he gets, I guess, to make some mistakes on the job, but you can't make the same mistake twice. And you know, listen, he's got the locker room. I do think they love him. I think there are some really good young players that will become the core part of the Jets going forward. And they're just going to come down to, you know, can Zach Wilson play? I believe he can. And you know, fingers crossed, I'm right. Absolutely. So. All right, so how good a bowler are you, dog? I mean, if you're out bowling right now, I love bowling. I mean, where are we between here, man? What's up with the bowling? What's the number? Uh, so here's the deal. So my high game with just now today was a 156, which is oh, not great. Damn. But yeah. more importantly, I'm go bowling with my kids. Uh, I thought I was a tough guy. So at the end of it, you know, the time's running down on the clock. We've been there an hour and a half. They, uh, they put up the speed, miles per hour, of how hard you throw the ball. Now I got a high school junior who's the starting quarterback of his football team who can bench 205 pounds. I got, a, as you know, a sophomore at the University of Miami who's like a green bean who couldn't bench 80 pounds. So I go up and I throw that ball 22.9 miles per hour, and I'm peacocking all over the bowling alley. 22.9. Come get some. My 11th grader just threw the ball 27 miles per hour. <laughs> hey, 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 Craig, let me finish just by saying this, man. Congratulations to you on a spectacular. You're the comeback kid of the year, man, and I am so happy to be your friend, man. That was one of the greatest years in radio history for a guy, and I just got to tell you, man, I one of the biggest wow. fans of you, man. Thank you so much for doing this, brother. I appreciate it. I'm proud of you. Uh, people don't understand how there's no such thing as an overnight success in this business. And you got to take your lumps. And a story for your audience. There was a time about eight years ago, Dan and I didn't speak to each other. <laughs> and it's Facts. one of those things I tell my kids all the time. There, there are moments in life when, not that we were enemies, we weren't, but right. that you'll find that there's guys you don't get along with in a certain part of your life who will ultimately become very close friends because you're yep. more similar than you know. And That's I count right. you among those guys. I'm happy for you. I'm proud of you. And, and uh, we'll get together for sure. Or maybe down at the U because they need some help, uh, or if not, in New York for sure. Thank you, brother. I appreciate it. Craig, happy holidays to you, brother. You too. Be good. You got it, Craig Carton. All right, we'll take a brief time out. Do me a favor. Hit that like button, friends. We'll get back. We'll finish up a football Friday. All with you here next on the National Football Show. <laughs> At Stateside Vodka, every new customer gets the world's best rocks glass. Free. What's that? Uh, a rocks glass? You're telling me that bottle is cut in half? You could say that. Holy shit. And you're telling me I can get one of these glasses for free? That's right. One free rocks glass per customer with each first-time purchase of Stateside Vodka. So good, it just disappears. When it comes to the fight against insurance companies, large corporations, and the healthcare industry, injured victims are always the underdog. But that doesn't worry us. At Messon Associates, we're an injury law firm from Philadelphia, and we come to fight. Our clients know that they've got representation with a chip on its shoulder, and it's the same chip that makes Philly the toughest city in the country. 
call 215-568-3500 or visit us online at messalaw.com. Messa and Associates, the toughest injury firm in Philadelphia. Field of life. First Trust Bank is there for you. Because Philadelphia dreams deserve a Philadelphia bank. Go for the midnight tears. Go for the game. Go for the hits. Go for the fans. Go for the win. Go to Ocean Casino Resorts. Book your trip at theoceanac.com. At Stateside Vodka, every new customer gets the world's best rocks glass. Free. You're telling me that bottle is cut in half? You could say that. Welcome back. National Football Show. Dan Cilio here. Hey, by the way, please hit that like button. We're almost there. Almost to 100. You guys are freaking unbelievable. It's true. It's true. Big Chris says he basically said, I used to think Sills was an asshat. And now we're cool. No, no, we're not cool now. We're boys now. We're like best buddies, man. We, we, we talk all the time. And he knows I'm going through a little bit in my career, but Jacob Media, man, has made it go like this back up again. Okay, just so you know. And um, no, Craig, hey, a year ago, Craig was in jail. Now he's the number one afternoon radio host in New York City. Is that not crazy? He's now the number one drive time host. In New York City with his partner. It's not because of Craig, though. Because that guy was there in the afternoons before, and they weren't anywhere near number one. And now Craig's got number one at WFAN. And I love him, man. Thank you, Nick. Man, I love you guys, too, man. You know, and if I had to, if I had to really tell you something, man, you know what, guys? I would take Philly talk over New York talk any day. I would, and I'm from that area. Here's why. I just think there's something different about blue-collar cities compared to white-collar cities. I, th- I look at New York as a white-collar city. Like, L.A. is a white-collar city. Those aren't blue-collar cities. Boston, Pittsburgh, Chicago, Cleveland. Like, Miami is not a blue-collar city. It's not a blue-collar city, dude. Okay. As a matter of fact, there's no place in my, well, little Havana, maybe blue collar. Ken, thank you, man. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Kevin, thank you. Yeah. He was on WIP for a little bit, Craig. Yeah, man. Very talented kid. Very talented. And yeah, we become, we buried the hatchet. It's funny. We buried the hatchet. Like we buried the hatchet prior to him going into jail, actually. And when he was in jail, I reached out to him. How you doing, dude? You need anything? Yeah. You know, what what do you need? Is there something you need? Uh, Just, you know, I sent him some things on email and, you know, he laughed his ass off. We became friends. I communicated with him when he was in jail. Hey, Birdman, we're going to get there. By the way, Birdman, so you know, Joe Rogan watches the show. AJ, thank you, brother. Thank you, AJ. Giants versus Eagles. Here's the blueprint. Let's identify first what the weaknesses of the Giants are first, okay? Let's look around the team first. 
So Freddie Kitchens is going to call the plays, right? Okay. Freddie Kitchens. It's going to be the play caller. I'm not, I, I don't really even care about his style. All I know is you went from Garrett, and you heard Craig Carton, what he just said. Craig Carton said he thought he was a patsy. Okay? Thought he was a patsy and was just an excuse to fire somebody because they needed to fire somebody. Okay? We hold grudges and bury you. With hatchets. Hey, Chris, you don't have to say just kidding because on this show, there's no politically correct. You don't have to be politically correct here, dude. There's no politically correctness here. We don't have that shit here. You're here because you want to be here, Chris. Don't worry about that. You don't have to say you're kidding. We're all in this together, man. This is a place. This is our locker room. And inside of a locker room, do you know what that means? You could say anything you feel like because we all know it's not personal. There's no snowflakes in here. That's right, AJ. No snowflakes. Snowflakes aren't allowed. Cancel culture's not allowed here. Get the fuck out of here. You don't like something that's being said? Go bother somebody else. Go go over there and bother them. Nobody cares what you're saying. We're going back old school here on this program, my friends, where you don't have to worry about what you say. Sarcasm. Do you know, what's, do you know what the snowflakes did to my friend Tony Bruno? They drove him out of the business almost. Sarcasm is accepted here. Okay. It's accepted here. Okay? <laughs> East side monster. Go cry in the corner. Fucking get out of here. Hey, like, what's Pedro say? There's no crying in baseball. There's no crying in the national football show. Oh, you see, you couldn't do that on the radio because you know why? I would be doing an imitation of a Latin. Even though I'm Latin. I'm Italian. Did you hear what he said? He has no respect. He's a racist, sexist, misogynist. I'm like, I, I couldn't even spell all those things. I couldn't even spell all those things. All I know is those people in our business, why Craig and I are close now, because you know why? We call those people sabotage people, saboteurs. They sabotage you. The Giants' issues right now have a lot. It's external and internal. Play to that. Okay? New play caller, which means there's going to be passing routes that are not, and these guys are not going to be all on the same page. Blocking schemes. If I were Jonathan Gannon, do you know how much moving around that I would do defensively to the Giants this weekend? I would try to confuse these guys as much as possible. It's a brand new play caller. Defensively, I would do so much disguising, but I would play base because that giant offensive line is haw it's awful. Play into the lack of knowledge that the Giants don't have with this new coordinator. Eastside Monster, poor Jason Garrett. Hang on for a second. Sarcasm right there with Eastside Monster. Poor Jason Garrett. The Giants just fired their OC. Oh, my God. Oh, what a what, – what, 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 oh, my God. It's so – uh, yeah, yeah, okay. <laughs> Paul says, nobody loves you when you're down and out. John Lennon, one of my favorite people of all time. Hey, Paul, I'll be watching that Let It Be thing. You guarantee you. Disney Plus. I'll be watching that 57 minutes of, of like footage they found from the original Let It Be. I'm going to be watching that. Eagles by 10 over the Giants. Yeah, man. And, and then do this to that Giant defense. Run that rock. Run that rock. Run that rock. I don't care if you have to run it 60 times. 
run that thing. Just run it as much as you possibly can. Run that thing. Don't get any turnovers. Rotate backs. Sure, Wick. Sure. Okay? Absolutely. But stay simple. Stay to your identity. You've built this. Now nurture it. Now grow it. Don't add anything to it. You don't need to against this Giants and Jets team. You know, I could sit here and talk and sprinkle in Jets talk, but if I was in that locker room, I wouldn't be talking anything about the Jets. I'd be talking about my first five plays that I'm going to play against an opponent that I'm playing against. Carlos, Carlos, if you went out, I mean, then right, then there's you have you have your own future in your own hands, right? If you went out, you don't have to worry about anything. Because you'll finish 11 and 6. And you're not going to have to worry about anything. That That's a great point, though. Win out. You should have the mentality. Win out. Let's win every. Let's, let's win them all. Why not? Paul says, I like the Eagles 26-16 over the Giants. Star of the game, Boston Scott. You guys like this guy, don't you? Timothy, I'd like to see Watkins get a 50-yard touchdown catch, and basically put that kid Rieger to sleep. I would love to see him have a big game. And that would put that guy to sleep. Do we agree? Eastside, Rents do, man. Hey, man, you know what? Eastside, you and me need to make some T-shirts with that. Rents do. Ken says, Eagles 28 to 10. You know, Ken... I think it's closer. I think it's going to be 24-14. I think it's going to be like that. 24-14, something like that. I don't think the Giants have enough. I don't think the Giants have enough offense. And that offensive line, I don't think it's going to be able to protect Daniel Jones. Hey, Hey, Big Chris. I, I thought of you guys, man. Deshaun Watson, or Deshaun Jackson, excuse me. He did, didn't he, man? He took that thing to the house. I was the first thing I thought about, too, man. He took that thing to the house. He went up that sideline for the Raiders, man. I'm like, dude, it was, you know what? You know what really showed up to me a little bit on the Cowboys? Was I was I seeing the same thing you guys were seeing? Didn't it look like the Dallas Cowboys didn't show up? It just looked like they didn't show up. And they thought that the Raiders were just going to lay down. Super Dave says, I got the Eagles 33-17. Birdman, 44-17. Boston Scott. You guys like him, man. I see this. He could still run. AJ, he could still. Hey, dude. That guy's going to be able to still run for a long time. They're trash, bro. <laughs> Dupree says 33-19. Guys, you're feeling it, ain't you? You're feeling it. You're feeling like, hey, you know, don't, hey, be careful. AJ, now we're going. Now we're talking a little bit here. Paul says the only thing that scares me versus the Giants is bootlegs by Jones. That's right. It's a good call. Getting out on the perimeter, breaking down containment. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> James goes if Sanders fumbles. Dude, Sanders, what do you have, two in the last game? Lost one of them? If Sanders fumbles, I'm going to lose it. They can't have turnovers out the door. 215, Boston Scott owns New York teams. Home and away. <laughs> hey, man, that's always great when you got one player that just kills a team. Oh, my God. Just kills the team. And you, you, do you remember back in the day? Like Lindros used to just kill the Maple Leafs. He used to just kill the Leafs, man. Every time. I mean, I think he made his Hall of Fame career on killing the Leafs. Jeremiah says, think about it, Sills. We got an undrafted guy in Boston. Sproles. Trajectory. 
first round guy in the unemployment trajectory. <laughs> uh, but that's what saves the day. If you're a talent evaluator, that's what saves the day. Guys, has to be the last three weeks of this thing. Xander will tell you too. Has to be one of the best um, times of the show. You guys have blown it up. It's blown up. Gary Cobb will join us again on Monday too, by the way. Um, over 100 likes. You guys have been spectacular. We thank you. I want to thank Merrill Reese and also Craig Carton for coming aboard. Guys, it's a turkey day. Thir Thursday was awesome. Friday, you know, we have leftovers. Nothing like leftovers too, right? And you got football this weekend. Till Monday, 4 to 6. Big sales the same. We'll see you on the flip.